So a few videos ago, and this is kind of being a running trend here, we did a, uh, a D-Lid for the first time ever, and it turned out great. We dropped a whole bunch of degrees on the CPU, and then I sent it out to my buddy Jeff, and after about 20 minutes or so of running, it died, so let's find out where we went wrong. Seriously, Jeff, a single piece of tape to keep this thing in here? Oh, what is this? <laughs> he left the Reese's in here for me. <laughs> we got all the stickers. I'm gonna eat it. I don't know if it's safe, but I'm gonna eat it. It's chocolate, why wouldn't I? Oh, it's kind of chalky. Oh well. Well, there's all kinds of candy in here, yo. How dank. I like how I send him a good motherboard and he sends me back a bad one, but at least it has candy. Look at this guy. He left me all kinds of little printouts. <laughs> all right, so let's get into the thick of it. Oh, they cleaned off my, my beautiful love letter. All right. So what could have possibly gone wrong with this thing? I don't see anything immediately damaged. I didn't think that he would damage anything, but I don't know if I ever took this thing out of the, the back after I deleted it. I think I did an okay job of reseating. Hmm, yes. There appears to be some gunk on one of these CPU pads. I'm gonna do a bit of a voiceover here. I don't know if you guys can see it better in the close-up, but it appears to be some gunk on the uh, the CPU contact pad, so we're gonna clean that up and see if we can't boot this thing up. There was some schmutz inside of the socket too, so that could have caused something. Let's get some, uh, let's get some toilet paper for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean off the CPU contact pads with uh, toilet paper and some alcohol. By the way guys, if you didn't see that video, this is a Intel Core i7 6700K and uh, that video turned out great. We got crazy high overclocks on this thing and uh, it, it was acting just fine. So hopefully it's just cleaning up these pads and we'll get right back into it. Let's drop this thing back in here. A little bit old. Latch it back down. All right, let's get Benchy. Benchy's drive back in him. So I had a bit of a panic moment and realized I didn't actually have any Intel coolers here. <laughs> but I think I have a Cooler Master AIO that I got from the uh, how to get a good deal on a PC video. So we're gonna use that. Not gonna lie, this is way more convoluted than it needs to be, but uh, this is all I have. Wait, this is a deep cool. Yeah, this is a deep cool 240. It's kind of loud, it's kind of noisy. I don't like it that much. I don't trust it because I don't know how long it's been, been used for, but uh, should work okay for just cooling this random Intel thing out of the box. Luckily for me, it uses the same uh, mounting style as in Assassin 3. So one, I know how to work how to work it, and two, I have some brackets laying around for it. Unfortunately for me, it is set up on an AMD bracket right now. So here I go switching everything around. We can you can in fact use an Assassin 3 cooler mounter. Mounter mounting bracket for uh, their AIOs. So that's nice of them to make it kind of universal. You know, Jeff really didn't want to send this back to me because he didn't want me plugging it in and turning it on and it working immediately. So let's all just hope it doesn't work. And I somehow in fact did kill this poor Intel CPU. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can't boot it up on the integrated graphics. And then if that, 
for some reason doesn't work, then I'll put a GPU in it, but I don't think that if the integrated graphics are dead that it'll work otherwise. So let's give it a shot. All right, so we got a post. That's a good sign, generally. All right, let's see. We're in a nice cold 20 degrees C. <laughs> Ooh, it is cold in this garage, I tell you what. Let's go ahead and enable XMP. Let's shut it down and uh, put a GPU in it. I'm thinking a 1080 will work just fine for this application. All right, this will verify that it's not a PCI slot that's dead. It's, it was just cleaning up those pins that uh, fixed this bad boy up. Man, we're gonna have to send it again. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, we're overclocked 7%. Ooh. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and enable XMP. Oh, is there no battery in there? I think the battery might also be dead. Uh, what is this? What does this red light on mean? I don't trust that red light there. It says boot device LED. It's not good. Um, let's go to F7 advanced mode. Let's go ahead and give it a all core of 4.8. And I'm going to give it uh, not offset mode, but manual mode. I'm going to give it 0.35 volts and then let's go ahead and send it overclock 20 percent i love these old i7s but damn you really need to delid these things because they get spicy intel brand toothpaste no joke i think it's looking pretty good for this this old girl god can you imagine back in the day having this combination of parts, because I think they're from relatively the, a, a similar time period, you know, 2017, 2016 era stuff here. I can't remember off the top of my head really, but I think they're about the same time period. So this is quite a good balanced setup. With only four cores, it's kind of like, ooh, but at least it's, at least it's overclockable so you can get more out of it even though you're only working with four cores, you can get these things up to like, you know, 4.8, obviously. We're booting in just fine. <laughs> I'm gonna say that and it's gonna crash now. All right, let's uh, open up Cupid hardware monitor. Let's go ahead and open up. Eh, I'm not gonna open up that Cinebench. <laughs> We're not gonna go that hard. Let's go ahead and just hit it with Cinebench R15 because that's a much more realistic workload. God, 50 something degrees while running Cinebench. Oh, oh that's so good. <laughs> but at the same time, it's only four cores. So it's like, it's not that impressive, but still, still. For a 6700K, this thing runs ice cold. So yeah, I think that 10,047 score was actually while we were uh, clocking it up to like five gigahertz on the same drive because we just, we did the D-Lid and then we clocked it to like five gigahertz and we were like, holy smokes. And then we, we shipped it to Jeff and after about 10 minutes of running, he said it just turned off on him and it wouldn't turn back on. So I think literally all it was was just cleaning that substrate and getting it reseated in the socket. So if you're having some problems with your Intel, you might, not, you might wanna look into that. So yeah, guys, that's literally all it was, was uh, you saw me open the box, literally take it straight out of the box, take a good look at it, see that there was some gunk on one of the contact pads on the underside of the substrate. We got that cleaned up with some alcohol and toilet paper. We plugged it back into the motherboard, fired it up. It booted right in on the integrated graphics. We plugged a GPU in to make sure that the GPU was, or the, the PCI slot was working and ran some Cinebench just to make sure that all the cores are working as they should and they're overclocked as they should and it's nice and cool. And that's really going to do it for today, guys. Uh, Jeff's going to hate me for posting this, really. So go ahead and show his channel some love, along with Ferris, his girlfriend's, I mean, wife's channel. And maybe leave a comment on this video. Like it, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.